AFib is short for atrial fibrillation. It's the most common heart rhythm disturbance. It affects uh, millions of people. It can make some people feel poorly with uh, the heart beating funny, but it increases the risk of stroke. Your risk of stroke on average is five times higher than the average population once you have atrial fibrillation. Most at uh, atrial fibrillation patients need to be on blood thinners to prevent stroke, and that's what, uh, how most people are treated. However, every once in a while some patients uh, have bleeding complications or at, are at increased risk of bleeding. For them, a second option is something called a left atrial appendage occlusion. It's a procedure that enables them to come off blood thinners eventually. The procedure that is an option, an alternative to blood thinning medication for patients to allow them to still have protection against stroke is called a watchman and it's a device that can be put in the left atrial appendage of the heart. That is the part of the heart where blood clots typically form with patients in atrial fibrillation. So as an alternative to being on a blood thinner, it's a device that can be put in there through a tube that is put in the vein in the leg. A tubing from there can be placed into this appendage and the watchman is a device that has a metal frame shaped like a parachute with a material coating. Once the tubing is put into the appendage, that device can be compressed, run up through the tubing, put into the appendage, and when it's in the proper location through, which we define through imaging and ultrasound imaging of the heart, the tubing is simply pulled back to allow the device to expand out. When it's expanded, it actually obliterates the blood flow into the appendage, so now there is no way for a blood clot to come out of that appendage. And actually, over a period of time, in fact, the appendage is totally sealed, so there's no blood flow in there at all. Once that has been accomplished, then the only blood thinner that patients need long-term is aspirin therapy. So it's an invasive procedure where we're putting some, um, something mechanical in your heart. The risk the day you have it done is in the 1% vicinity. Uh, that includes perforation of the heart with bleeding around it, or the device dislodging or stroke, but all the bad things together are about 1% the day of implant. Then patients need to be on blood thinners for a few weeks while the device heals. So during that time, you're still vulnerable for bleeding, which is why most patients get this device. Uh, so you take a small risk of bleeding for a few weeks to benefit from reducing risk of stroke and not need blood thinners long-term. After the procedure is done, most patients are in the hospital only for an overnight observation. And at that point, can be discharged to home with pretty much getting back to normal routine and activity level. They stay on their blood thinners, usually aspirin and Coumadin, for up to six weeks. And then after six weeks, we do another ultrasound study of the heart to make sure that the device has completely sealed the appendage. At that point, if it is confirmed, patients are taken off their Coumadin and then used another less um, aggressive blood thinner uh, for a period of four months. Uh, and at that point, simply on aspirin therapy alone. We typically do office visits with patients um, uh, at six weeks after the implant and at six months and then yearly thereafter. Patients coming to Spectrum can expect all aspects of their atrial fibrillation taken care of. We have a team of electrophysiologists that perform hundreds of ablations a year for patients who have symptoms from AFib. Their risk of stroke can be addressed with blood thinners or a few of them will end up needing the watchman device. And uh, this multidisciplinary approach will have patients better covered uh, when, when they come to an institution where we can take care of all of those things at the same time.